Let's Science is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. We live in a universe of scientific wonders. Every day, scientists are inching towards breakthroughs which can change our lives. We're playing our small part in sharing these wonders with you. That's why today is a fine day for science. So let's science. So, uh, Caroline, you piqued my interest during the week when you texted in our in our um, <laughs> in our Catholics of Oz um, chat that uh, you're going to be talking about what is it? Ancient drop bears. Yes. Now we've had, we've we've had some drop bear stuff going on before, so I'll I won't I won't take the words out of your mouth because I know you want to talk about it. So Caroline, tell us about <laughs> the science of ancient drop bears. Uh, I actually heard about the excuse my voice. I heard about this this week on the radio, and I just had to look into it some more and find out more about it. And I just thought this is perfect. <laughs> so here we are, ancient drop bears. Now look. We know that drop bears are quite common here in Australia. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, maybe not, maybe not. But the legend of the drop bear is, right? <laughs> the legend is very common, yeah. That's it. Yeah. So, and if you want to know more about drop bears, I would like to um, direct you to um, the great discussion about them in episode 148 of Jimmy Aiken's Mysterious World. Possibly featuring the Catholics of Oz as well. Possibly featuring us, <laughs> yes. So that was quite a fun episode. But he maybe is maybe suggesting that were, were they real? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> well, today I want to explore the possible connection with the drop bear or the flesh-eating koala that drops out of trees and mauls <laughs> tourists with the ancient species of koala-like marsupial named Nimbodon levaracorum. This is why we shouldn't use Latin names for flora and fauna, I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> so let's just call him Nimbodon, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Researchers at the University of New South Wales have actually been studying 15 million year old fossil skeletons of these ancient marsupials and recently published their results in the Journal of Paleontology. So this is very new findings right now. And I'll provide a link to the journal article. Yep. Because it's quite interesting and it's relatively easy to read. It's well laid out. You may need to look up some terms, but I found it really, really good to read. So the well-preserved bones are being studied were found in a cave in the Riversley World Heritage Area, Bujamala in Wani area of northwestern Queensland. So Nimbadon lived in the middle Miocene period, which was about 25 to 10 million years ago when large animals were actually, large mammals were abundant. Quite quite a good time for animals, lots of mammals around, lots of different types of mammals. And they were larger, weren't they? Is that right? They were really big. They were really big. And I'll tell you how big soon. Yeah. Am I making this up that there were like giant wombats and things like that? That's also a thing or? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Just want to give one a cuddle. There's heaps of big animals. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you want to cuddle them, but yes. The, the nice ones, not they the grumpy large. ones. I know, I know wombats could be quite That's dangerous, it. but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they're so cute and very too. They are, yeah. with claws and bitey things. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Australia. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. So this Miocene period was a time when the Earth went through a warm, warming up period after the cooler Oligocene period. So it, it was warm and then it, it was quite wet, but then as the Miocene period went on, it actually became drier over time. But in the time period when Nimbadon lived and where the Riversley skeletons were found, it was a lush rainforest and it was filled with lakes and waterways. The skeletons from the animals that died in the area were actually very well preserved due to the calcium carbonate that's in the water and that created a mud that was ideal for preservation. Mm -hmm. Animals that lived during this time included, ready? Yep, go for it. And this was in Australia, included flesh-eating kangaroos. Awesome. Tree, yes, tree-climbing crocodiles, Ooh. marsupial lions, horned turtles, and something called a fingerdoton, which <laughs> belongs to the only completely extinct order of Australian marsupials is strange and it's also strange in the way that it has no close relatives that actually could be studied mm. and they think that maybe it ate caterpillars or eggs so there we go so that was the calm one in the family compared to all the others basically 
Yeah, eight caterpillars and eggs. That's it. And I just want to point out, I know that many people have said Australia is full of dangerous animals. I, I mean, you ain't seen nothing, all right? So <laughs> they, those are, it, it's calm compared to maybe what it was 10 million years ago. But let me say one word, cassowary. I was thinking of cassowary, like I say, but still don't pet a cassowary. Yeah, whatever you do. Yeah. The only good way to see a cassowary yeah. is from behind a fence. <laughs> I was thinking exactly the same thing as you. And that's the only way you'll actually ever see one. Yeah. And the only way you actually want to see one. Yeah. Google it. They're beautiful, but don't go, they look at you funny. They are beautiful birds. They look at you funny. It's basically a velociraptor with feathers. I'll just say that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And about our height. And yeah, and yeah, human size. Yeah. Probably as close to Jurassic Park as you'll get in Australia. Yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> emus. Yeah, emus are yeah, okay. Yeah, but they're calm. You anyway. can feed them. You can feed them from your hand. Emus, are, yeah, yeah. They're pretty docile. They're quite assertive though. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> just be nice to emus. <laughs> anyway. Don't offend them. You'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I love them. Anyway. Don't, don't, just don't remind them they can't fly and they'll be, you'll be okay. Yes, yeah. that's right. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> carrying on. on. Back to Nimbodon. This animal actually belongs to an extinct group of marsupials called the Dimper- Diprodontid. And the closest known living relatives of Nimbodon are actually the wombats and koalas who are in the order of Diprodontia. And these are characterized as having two forwardly directed lower incisors, which they use to chew on and break down vegetation. The Diprodontids were a large group of marsupials with large bodies and they weighed between 70 to 2000 kilograms. Massive, massive animals. Mm. And their fossils have been found in Australia and New Guinea. Now, Nimbodon was thought to weigh in at about 70 kilograms. He lived in the Australian forest canopies. Even though it was on the small side of the large animals, one of the largest to live in trees. You don't want 70 kilos falling on top of you. <laughs> um, no way. When, when these skeletons were first discovered in 1993, scientists assumed that these animals used to move in herds and forage for leaves on the forest floor. However, further study into Nimbodon showed that it was anatomically similar to koalas having four limbs, highly mobile shoulders, elbows, as well as semi-opposable digits with large claws. And its body shape was ideal for living up in the trees and hopefully holding on to them. <laughs> <laughs> and I say this because paleontologists think that not only did Nimbodon hug trees like koalas, but they probably also hung from trees in similar way to sloths. <laughs> and that's where the drop bear part comes uh-huh. in. That's the legend. These koalas, yeah. that's right. These koalas used to hang from the trees. <laughs> And presumably, if they didn't hang on to a tree properly for any reason, they would drop <laughs> like a drop bear. <laughs> in fact, it's in the forest floor caves where the fossilized skeletons have been found. So it seems some animals did drop out of trees and they've even been preserved well enough to study in depth. Further study on the fossilized skeleton found that the bone was extremely well preserved and intact enough to study the growth patterns of Nimbodon. Um, in this particular study that I read, Juvenile and adult tibia and femur bones were examined microscopically and they found growth marks indicated by stratification in the bone, suggesting times of rapid growth and periods of slow growth in the animals. The periods of fast and slow growth in the animals can be explained by environmental conditions at the time that they were living. The periods of fast growth indicate the times where there was abundance of food and water while their periods of slow growth would correlate with times when it was harsher, so less resources were available. This phenomenon is actually being seen today in western grey kangaroo bones, which is a species that lives in Australia today. So they will grow during good times and they will slow their growth during harsher times. So for these Nimbodon animals, the study suggests that their teeth were ideal for eating fruit and the researchers put forward that perhaps there was a rise and fall in the abundance of fruit during the middle Miocene period when they lived, possibly caused by the variation of the amount of rainfall that occurred each season. The growth marks also indicated that it took about seven to eight years for an individual to reach sexual maturity. If there was a slow year, maybe they didn't, you know, really grow at all that year. It could have taken longer than that. So, since growth to an adult took so long, it's also thought that these Nimbodon animals were probably quite long-lived. So there you go. Something interesting about the yeah. 
not so ferocious real life drop bear of Australia. Yeah, so they're real. <laughs> We've confirmed now that at least at one point they were like real bona fide drop bears. Yeah, they are. Now, now they're just lazy That's things that right. eat clo- that exactly. eat eucalyptus and sleep for the rest of the day. But uh, you know, but um. Yeah, they were real. There yeah. you go. <laughs> they were real. Drop bears were real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least in, in earlier times. Wow. So what, 10 million years ago? Yeah. We missed them by that yeah. much. <laughs> About 15 million. Yeah. Kind of happy we missed them though. Missed it by this much. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be working around Churchill Park, you know, walk, <laughs> go for a walk there and then a, you know, 2000 kilo drop bear, you know, ancient koala falls and you, that wouldn't be great. No, that wouldn't be good. Mm. So I remember on Jimmy Aiken's Mysterious World, one of the uh, jokes, like the jokes about drop bears, you know, for people visiting Australia, um, there was, like there was a parody guide about what to do. And one of the things said, if you want to be safe so that they, you know, like so they stay away from you is to smear uh, Vegemite on your face. <laughs> yes. I wonder if that would have worked with these ancient drop bears or if it would have made you more tasty for them. See, it depends because I reckon that half of drop bears would enjoy Vegemite and the other half wouldn't, just like in this, <laughs> the pop general. Of- yeah population of humans i'm just guessing like the rest of australia because <laughs> you either actually really love vegemite or you don't yeah mm, i mean that i love vegemite yeah that's right. of course we are we have to declare that i mean that i love vegemite yeah oh yeah we're sorry we're not yes. ashamed everyone we do love vegemite we do mm. we do but yeah i mean yeah Eat vegemite on toast with butter mm. so good there's nothing better nothing's honestly. better exactly we should have put that in the entertainment mm. segment <laughs> <laughs> That, that is such a fascinating topic. I, I didn't realize. Isn't it cool? Yeah, yeah. That like yeah. Your ferocious quails. But also hearing about, you know, flesh-eating kangaroos and crocodiles in trees. I thought, I thought, are you pulling my leg? But that's, it's amazing to think of what these ancient Australian creatures were, were like before. And then through evolution, they've kind of calmed down a little bit. <laughs> it's so amazing. I mean, everybody loves a dinosaur, right? Yeah. But there's all this, also this period of crazy mammals and marsupials living and we've still got you know their and their um descendants descendants today yeah. so we kind of have a tiny glimpse of literally tiny because they're a lot tinier than yeah than their ancestors yeah. and imagine living with all those beautiful massive furry cuddly animals okay not so cuddly but <laughs> wow this is the thing, I mean, right? I think, yeah. yeah. Like a lot of Australian animals, right, crocodiles aside, right, a lot of Australian animals are cuddly, right? Not not all of them, right? You know, they look like, cuddly. Like there are some spiny ones, you know, like the kidneys or whatever, you just don't yeah. touch them, right? But they're, yeah. they're pretty cuddly. However, they're pretty ferocious too. <laughs> like, the thing is, I reckon you'd have a time limit. Like you could hold a koala for a while until it's had enough. Yeah. And there's like claws and like probably the same for a wombat. Wombats are gorgeous. Like they're actually my favorite. And I've cuddled a wombat. Yeah. I've cut, oh. and like not in the wild, obviously, like, you know, this is like yeah. in a farm yeah. it was all controlled. And it's like the best cuddle you'll ever have, right? Yeah. But they can be so fierce. Exactly. I reckon if when it's had enough, claws. Claws. Because those claws are massive. Have you seen, you've seen the claws, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, they got to dig. They dig holes in the ground. They make massive burrows because wombats can get quite large. Yes. Not as large as those ancient marsupials. But they pack on a lot. They yeah, can get yeah. really big. And those claws, as big as your fingers, like look at your fingers now. Mm, yeah. <laughs> That's how big their claws yeah, can get. Good, They're like really long. Yeah. Goodness me, yeah. Crazy. And a kangaroo, like we feed kangaroos, like we go to wildlife parks and things like that. Yeah, yeah, and wallabies and yep, yep. But it's deceptive because if you go in the wild and you attempt to feed like a massive tall kangaroo, yep. I wouldn't do it Yeah, because they will just stand on their tail and it's not. it's been documented a few cases of pe- people actually being Beaten up by kangaroos, so. Yeah, beaten up. They actually do. They're, they're like, they're nature's bullies. Yeah, that's right. Um, just watch two alphas getting into a fight. There's videos everywhere. You do not oh. want to mess with kangaroos when they're angry. Yeah. No. Yeah, they're quite fierce. But anyway, we love them anyway. And I, like we do cuddle them yeah. when we go to wildlife parks and stuff. So They are beautiful Aussie icons and we love them, even if they're, you know, they've got a bit of an attitude problem in the wild. <laughs> Yeah, Fantastic. that's similar to humans, isn't it? We're nice until we're not. <laughs> yeah, but not but not kangaroo, wombat, wild, but, you know. No, yeah. maybe not that crazy. Yeah. We um, don't have claws. Yeah, yeah, thankfully. Caroline, I love a good Australian animal segment, and that was, that was fascinating. Thanks for sharing that. That was so good. Oh, very welcome. Yeah. It was fun. Let's Science is brought to you by StarQuest Media and is a fortnightly podcast that brings you the scientific wonders of our universe from a distinctly Catholic point of view. For more from Caroline, Lindsay, and friends, listen to the StarQuest show, Catholics of Oz. Find links from today's show at sqpn.com science. 
And find the Catholics of Oz at sqpn.com slash Oz. Be sure to follow the show in Apple Podcasts, Google Play, wherever you can find podcasts, or on the SQPN YouTube channel. The generous donations of our patrons at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue Let Science and all the shows at StarQuest, which makes our nonprofit mission possible. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. Join us next time for more scientific wonders, and thank you for listening to Let Science on StarQuest. Here's another show on the StarQuest Network you're sure to enjoy, Prey Station Portable. Find it wherever fine podcasts are found or at starquest.fm slash PSP.